Welcome to this class today, this evening, and I have a question that I have gotten from a topic called Commercial Arithmetic 2. And the question tells us that the mark price of a television set is 25,600 Kenyan shillings. On cash payment, a customer is given a discount of 5% on the marked price. The TV can also be bought on high purchase terms by paying a deposit of 12,640 Kenyan shillings and 16 equal monthly installments of Kenyan shillings, 1,450 each. The first question, calculate the cash price of the machine. And the second question asks, calculate the high purchase value. The third question asks, calculate the rate of covered interest charged per month for high purchase terms. And the last part says, find the difference between the cash price value and the high purchase value. So we will proceed and uh, begin doing the first question. So I have been told that the marked price, the marked price of this television set. So we have a television set that costs 5,600 shillings. So if I have to tiptoe to this business center, I'm going to get this television set marked at 25,600 Kenyan shillings. Now, as a customer, I'm going to begin so that a particular percentage can get deducted from this marked price so that the main costs can get catered for in terms of purchasing this item by this customer or I as an individual. So you're told that you're given a 5% discount. So mark price is always associated with discount. There are possibilities where, for example, in a supermarket, if a particular item is marked at a thousand kg shillings, you're not going to bargain. So there are some places you can bargain. And you see, of course, in a place where you can actually be able to get a loan of a gain, there's a possibility that the seller can be able to actually deduct a particular facility for what you're supposed to pay as the market price or the cost of that item. So this person is given a discount of 5%. And you see, in mathematics, we always say that market price is always 100%. Why? The initial price at which a particular item is supposed to get sold, it is always 100%. Anything that gets deducted from that 100% gets referred to as the discount. So, then if a discount is given, whatever remains in terms of what the customer has to pay is called the cost price, or be able to call it the buying price. You can either call it the cost price or so the buying price is going now to be 95%. Why? I went to the business center with an aim of purchasing this television set. I know very well the price at which that item is targeted is 100%. The initial price that the seller decides to sell that item. But as a customer, I'm going to begin. So whatever the seller deducts from the initial price, now the 100%, is what we refer to as the discount. So 100%, the initial price at which I'm supposed to purchase that item, less what I've actually been given as the discount, I'll actually be able to get 95%. Now the final price at which I'm going to purchase that item, referred to as cost price or buying price. So the question asks, calculate the cost price of the machine or the cash price of the machine. So I'll just come here and say 25,600, now the marked price, okay, is equivalent to 100%. Now, what about the cost price or the buying price or the cash price, which is actually percentage as 95%, less 5% given as the discount. So I can just cross multiply going to have 25,600 multiplied by 95% and I divide this by 
so that at the end of the day, I'm going to have this and this will disappear. So I have 256 multiplied by 95, so that I can be able to get the exact amount of money that this person is going to pay in terms of getting that television set. So 256 multiplied by 95. So the person ended up paying 24,320 Kenyan shillings. So this is the cost price for the price that the buyer ended up paying to actually obtain that television set. And of course, you see, at the end of the day, we shall actually be able to realize that the discount given is going to be, so you can be able to just say 25,600 less 24,320. So a discount of 1,280 Kenyan shillings was given to this customer. To enable the person have an access to the item and be able to get motivated to purchase the item. And the second part of that question says the higher purchase value. The higher purchase value. The higher purchase value. The higher purchase value. So let's get back to the question. So you're told that uh, the TV or the television set can also be bought on higher purchase terms by paying a deposit of 12,640 Kenyan shillings and 16 equal monthly installments of Kenyan shillings 1,450. And we know very well that if someone does not have enough money to purchase a particular item, then they can be able to resort to using what you call higher purchase terms. I want to purchase a piece of land. And that piece of land goes at 250,000 Kenyan shillings. Do I have that money? No. So I can decide to end up purchasing this time using a different method of purchase, which is called the higher purchase terms aspect of purchasing a particular item, for example, this piece of land. So higher purchase terms is used when a particular individual is in need of a particular item or property, and that person, or even service, does not have enough money that is required for that service or that item to get purchased. So what happens? They resort to higher purchase terms where they are supposed to actually end up having a deposit getting paid plus monthly installments. Good. So, higher purchase is a method of purchasing an item or having a particular service getting offered where an individual pays a deposit. So, HP, that is higher purchase, is equal to a deposit plus monthly installments. You see here, the individual was requested to pay a deposit of 12,640 Kenyan shillings. And the monthly installments are given as follows. The person has to pay 1,450 Kenyan shillings as a monthly installment and the amount of money that remain as what was supposed to get paid it is to get clear in 16 months. So you can be able to get the amount of money that the person ends up paying for him or her to actually obtain this television set. So that is 14, 15, and 6. So look at this. Monthly installments should be able to get done this way. You take how much the person pays per month times the total number of months that the person is supposed to actually use in terms of clearing the balance. Obviously, monthly instruments is what remains in terms of what you're supposed to pay to clear the balance when you obtain that item. Because you're supposed to actually give a particular deposit. And whatever remains has to get cleared on a monthly basis, they are called monthly instruments. The amount of money per month and by the number of months, and the balance has to get cleared. So 1450 times 16 or 1450 times 6, then 1450 times 10. Then you can say plus 12,640. So the person ended up Paying 35,840 shillings as the amount of money to get paid. You see, in terms of purchasing that television set. So, in most cases, you realize that sometimes the cost price is lower than the high purchase in terms of the cost of that item. So, it is up to you to decide. The advantage is you can still have the item once the deposit is paid and get the remaining balance. In as far as uh, 
this apple is concerned, depending on the direction the seller has decided to give you, so as to clear the remaining balance.